Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Julian. I'm here to do my reaction video for season one, episode seven of It's Okay to Not Be Okay. And this time it's episode seven, like I said, uh, titled The The Cheerful Dog. And we're here, we're back. We are ready for a new episode of this incredible show. I am dying. Trust me. Dying to binge this show. I mean, I'm dying to binge a lot of shows, and uh, but I have so many that I I feel like I have to make time for all of them. Um, but this is a show that I am dying to 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 um, to watch it um, for for two reasons. One, because it's good, and I love it, and two, because I made the not the mistake, but I made the suggestion to my mom. For her to watch this one. And my mom rarely takes my suggestions. You know. But she did this time. And she loved it. She loved this show. And she's on episode 11 or something like that. I don't know. I mean she doesn't watch any other things. While she's watching one thing. And my mom usually doesn't like. Like long ass episodes. But since she knows that it's a one season. With 16 episodes. She's pushing through. Watching every single second of it. And I'm like, and she is the worst at his spoilers. She hasn't spoiled anything for me, but I am afraid that, you know, there will be a time where she thinks she's talking to me about something and then she will spoil things. But for now, it's a pro it's prohibit subject to talk about this show within the two of us since she's far ahead <laughs> than I am. So we're going to watch episode seven. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys continue supporting for more. Please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you love It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell. Uncut reaction, as always, is posted first on Patreon in case you guys want to check that out. Link, as always, will be in the description down below. And yeah, uh, thank you to Victoria as well for sponsoring this show. I hope you enjoy. hope you like it. And for now, I think that's about it. Without further ado, let's just begin with Season 1, Episode 7 of It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no. This is from his point of view. <laughs> My baby. <laughs> I'm back. She was saying something but acting differently. They're so adorable. That's extremely sweet what he did. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she No No don't do don't do no It is logical that your brain will respond that way, you know? <laughs> oh! My God! <laughs> That's a cool shot! <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you falling in love too? Yes. Oh! <laughs> Did I understand what he's trying to do. That's not true. Okay. Yeah. 
They put the warning there. No. Oh. <laughs> now that's something. 내가 아픈 게 아니라 고픈 거였네. 먹으니까 눈에 살기가 살살 도는 게. 이제 좀살것 같아. 안 익었어. 괜찮아. 속에 열이 많아서. <웃음> 나랑 안녕했어. 어. 15년 지인 나보다 더 좋으니까. That has nothing 아닌데. to do with that. 아니, 네, 네. 나 때문인데. 내, 내, 내가 내가 작가님하고 계약을 해서 강, 강태가 온 건데 어, 언 플러스 언으로 언으로. 어? He feels like he's losing his friend to a possible girlfriend. 별로 별로 안 고파서. 여자랑 잡았어? Oh my god. 아지? 갈매기살 먹다 말고 무슨 헛소리야. 그런 게 없잖아. 먹고 싶은 것도 갖고 싶은 것도 그렇다고 딱히 하고 싶은 것도. 작가님 차기작에 좀 도움이 될 만한 일러스트 레퍼런스를 제가 좀 뽑아왔네. 남의 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 영업장에서 다른 업무 얘기는 난센스. 우리 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 나중은 죽기 전에 언젠가. 시 좋은데 걸으면 좋잖아. Yeah. 잘 가고 있나? 혼자 잘 가네. 아! 어머 씨. 아니 오늘 갑자기 오프를 냈길래 나랑 놀라고 하루 쉬었어 끊어 Honestly, if he seems more interested in her, just move on. You're sweet. Yeah, this time he's staying. 오늘은 같이 있어줘야 될것 같아서. That's so sweet. The sweetest one. Oh, hi. 자사랑 힘들어서 못 해봤겠네. 호. 나도. That's not what it is. <laughs> He's like, can you please? It's because she, he works for her. <laughs> what the fuck is she drinking? My <laughs> <laughs> His favorite subject. <laughs> he's, he's just pushing. <laughs> he's just pushing. <웃음> 연재 중인 소설의 마지막 권을 탈구한 날 흔적도 없이 사라졌지. 그렇게 실종된 지 5년 후에 사망 신고됐고. So she disappeared. She didn't die? Did he killed her? 늘한 발이 느리시네. Is that the mom? 살아 있다 아니다. 살아 있을 가능성도 있을까요? 아니. 그랬다면은 서쪽 만의 치유를 궁금해하는 나 같은 독자들을 태우진 않았겠지. 그리움이 아니라 두려움이면요. 어찌나 열불 나고 복장이 터지든지. 나 같은 년한테 이런 명품이 가당키나 해? 엄마 이러는 거 지친다. 다른 건별 기억이 안 나는데 내가 막 나도 너같이 철없는 자식은 필요 없어. 너 같은 자식은 필요 없다고. Oh my god. 그래 버렸네. Oh my god. 
그게 마지막일 줄 알았으면 절대 그런 독한 말은 안 했지 내가 대야 응? 너는 죽을 때까지 형 옆에 있어야 돼 엄마가 너 그러라고 나왔어 오케이 오케이 너무 좋았지 너 가슴 치면서 Oh, he comes with tears again. Why are we so good? Let's do it again. Oh. Ate. Ate, stop it. Oh, hey. Who are we going to attack? Why are we so good? Why? The state of mind. Are you okay? Why are you so sad? 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 Why? Why? As your best friend. 아주 그냥 꽉지. 아주 그냥 뭐. 세상에 다 죄인이지. 그 시절에 남편 없이 여자 혼자 애 키우는 거. 아이고. 네가 옆에 형 보호자로 살아봐서 잘알거 아니야. 그게 얼마나 힘들고 막막한지. 자, 우리끼리만 한잔 하십시다. 이러고 좋아서 애가 타는데 어제는 왜 애먼 놈 등판에 업혀 오셨대? 어표? 여보? 아동문학 상장 이상. Now she remembers. 아 예. 다시 책임자. 예, you were drunk. It's okay. 넌 적당히가 없잖아. 나도 취하고 너도 취하면 큰일 나. 응. 왜? 내가 덮칠까봐 겁나? Oh my god. <laughs> 적당히 까불어. 아, 때렸냐? 넌 칼로 그었지. Okay, we're even. 취하니까 잘 받아친다. <laughs> <laughs> He laughs. 담아 봐볼래. 와서 보는 건 있어가지고. She's getting her, right, her lips ready. 자, 눈 떠. <laughs> 뭐야 이 그지 깽깽 같은 건? 악몽 인형. 잘때 손에 쥐고 자면 얘가 이 망태 바구니에 악몽을 담아서 밤새 먹어 치워준대. That's so. That's very sweet. 귀엽게. 얘 이름은 망태. 우리 사명제거든. 소름. 형이 거기 짬뽕 좋아했잖아. 아닌데 네가 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 좋아했는데 네가 어, 맨날 맨날 먹고 싶어 엄마 졸라 갖고 엄마 맨날 그 장날 때마다 짬뽕은 매운데 맛있다 맛있어서 또 먹게 돼 짬뽕이다 <웃음> 얼른 먹어 엄마는 엄마는 배안 고픈데 얼른 먹어 매 아, 아, 매워 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 얼른 매워. 물, 물 마셔 보자 네. 어 감기 걸려 괜찮아? Her brain has a way to remember things differently sometimes. Kangte, what? Kangte, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, did here comes the tears. God damn it! Mama, what are you doing? Mama, you get under cold. No, don't take that away from her. Tangnanda. Ku ku ku. This one is for you, Ajima. Me and her are so. Then we will pay for it. Is that a real deal? Dude, don't do that to her. Joy. Go. I'm enough for a long time. Thank you. 이제 좀 어깨가 가볍네요. 그런데 낮에는 아이들과 한창 잘 놀던 개가 날에 개는 목 목격 못줄을 끊고 
어느 날 봄날의 개에게 마음이 속삭이듯 너는 왜 목줄을 끊고 도망가지 않니? 나는 너무 오래 묶여 있어서 목줄 끊는 법을 잊어버렸어. 잘했어, 공은영. <웃음> 뭐가? 네가 끊을 수 있게 도와줬잖아. I love that he's a lot kinder to her. Oh. Nodo, Nine, Oma Chalum Telquea, Chalte, Moposona. Gabe, what? Nantala. Is really cutting her ha hair up? Oh. Boriga. Ah, Mokjul Jalasso. If that ghost shows up, I swear God. Is he hallucinating or? She's even more beautiful. What a shock. Dude, I don't want to keep crying. After they make me cry the entire episode, man. Hello. Okay, guys, so that was the end of season one episode seven of it's okay to not be okay and uh, every single episode is is it's such a ride and it's 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 emotional is dramatic is crazy it's funny is you know and it's beautiful at the end of the day you know Every episode, I find it beautiful. Uh, because there are so many things, you know, that you kind of can either relate or take something from it and make it yours and make it uh, a way of like, oh, I have felt this way before. And maybe if I feel it again, this is a way for me to cope, you know? And I think it's beautiful, you know? The lessons that, uh, for instance, this episode uh, talking about grief, you know? Uh, the delusion this woman had of being rich and having a rich daughter and always carrying that shawl, you know? with her kind of like you know part of a punishment she put on herself and how the mind always you know can trick you you know can make you believe those things because for a lot of time in her delusion she believed it you know i think that in some level of course she knew the truth but she was not able to see it you know, now, Moon Young indirectly helped her. And she helped Moon Young as, as well a bit. Um, because it was grief and how long it takes and how, you know, um, how used to sometimes we, we get to a certain feeling, to certain things that trigger us. You know, we get so used to it that we lost ourselves and we kind of forget how it was before and how how to let go, you know. And and for for that lady and for uh, Moon Young, it was kind of the same, you know. Uh, the lady kept the shawl because her last interaction, sadly, with her daughter, it was one of like you know, a harsh kind of moment, you know, because for her birthday, her daughter kind of like, you know, brings this gift to her mom. And yes, it was ex an expensive gift. And the mom was like, nah, I don't want it. But it might also have something to do with the fact that maybe she was showing some type of disorder or something, or just she had a bad day, you know? And sometimes 
you're a human being. We humans tend to, you know, have bad days and uh, kind of um, you know, taking it on with the wrong people, you know. And she offers her this this something sweet because sometimes, you know, it's not that you are I, I don't know how many how much money that was. I don't know. But you know, you want to do something nice. And I have had those moments where I am like also annoyed at my mom. <laughs> because I feel like I I, you know, willingly do a lot for her and then sometimes I you know I'm, I'm standing there and she's yelling at me for the most stupid thing in my mind you know and I'm like you know is it worth it you know uh but at the end of the day I realize you know it's the heat of the moment it is the you know the bad moment the the fact that she might feel a little bit bad or you know there is no reason for you to take on your rage onto someone else that doesn't deserve it but we're human, you know, and we tend to do things like that. So, in my opinion, I, I do think that um, um, I do think that the mom, you know, was not in, in any way, shape, and form hated her daughter or, or, or something. She, she said harsh things, you know, things that sadly she can never take back but that now I feel like she has finally let loose you know caught loose um and that's honestly a way to recover there is the blaming part there is you know acceptance there is denial there is she has she's going through the process of grief you know and since she is doing that, um, part of that was to let go of that shawl that uh, represented that pain, that that suffering, that self-inflicted pain that she put on herself because she blamed herself for what happened because her last words to her daughter or because she, you know, let her daughter walk away that's why the accident happened. And now I think that she understands it a little bit better, you know, and is able to try at least to forgive herself for the things that happened. Know that, you know, she did not cause that accident, you know, and that sometimes things are written in stone, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. But she's processing it, you know. Um... Yeah. And I think that indirectly she also helped Moon Young with the fact of like, you know, let go, cut that tie, you know. And after the time you see, you know, you see or you hear the references to her own books and there there is a meaning to her books, right? And and and, and she writes about them, but she doesn't she has not worked on it in the same way. Like she expresses what she would like to do, but she's not able to do it. And in this episode, her mom was always like, you will keep your hair long and you will never cut it. And like, she has these memories of her mom that are very dark, you know, and very um, scary for her. And the memory of her mom is, is something that pains her, you know, that, that makes her fear. Uh... And I think that that's just how she copes with the disappearance. Because now we know that it was a disappearance. And now that her mom is actually dead. Her mom can dis be, you know, she could have disappeared. But her mom could still be alive. Now, there is a memory of her going into the you know, a uh, basement and seeing a lot of blood and seeing a, a woman that they never show us her face covered in a lot of blood. 
Now, that can be her memory, that can be her brain also making that up. We don't know. And there is a reason why the dad tried to choke her, right? So there are a lot of unanswered questions. And as you can see, and one thing that the show likes to do is that they make you think one thing, one thing, and then in the next episode they prove you if you actually see it from a different perspective, things are not so bad, you know? Uh, when I was younger, I had a very difficult relationship with my mom. I'm not going to say I had the... We have a, be a better relationship now. After I became a mom, we have a better relationship. Before that, it was like... I, I think it was because we, we were so we we are so much like each other like i'm very much i have this kind of the same uh uh traits of my some of the bad traits i guess of my mom I, I don't know um thing is that i always remember the bad you know i always remember the moments where my mom was harsh and mean and like you know punished me and things like that and that was before I had a, a kid, you know, but there are always things, not necessarily having a child or anything like that, but there are things that put you in perspective, you know, that put things in perspective. For instance, a lot of the times, you know, uh, after I became a mom and my mom and I started more talking like, like mother and daughter, but also as, as women, you know, from different generations um and women with similar uh uh stories in the sense of like she also had to you know take care of my brother a lot it was kind of like like the the sante gante and their mom and the mom always taking care of of the the uh sante not my brother doesn't have autism but he did a struggle a lot a lot with uh school and with talking he talked very late uh he learned how to control you know his you know peeing and all that he used diapers until he was very old and blah 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 you know and uh he doesn't do it now by the way <laughs> but you know and i never understood why my mom i didn't knew that i didn't knew that my brother had some challenges in his life and i never knew that uh and so when i was young i was very resentful of him you know because i was like you are so what my mom called like I, if i was smart then he in my mind he was dumb because he didn't talk as i did he didn't think as i did it's just that he processed information in a different way and he had some struggles as well because he had a medical malpractice as well done to him. So there's a lot of things that happened to him that I was not aware when I was little, you know, because you were little and when you're little, your mom doesn't inform you of everything, you know. So, but when I grew up and I, I, ha I had my own son and everything, the conversations started between us and... You know, I realized a lot of the times when, when, uh, a lot of the times when I felt that my mom did not care about me, it was not because she didn't care. It was because there was some other things that she had to do because also she was doing this on her own. She was a single mom taking care of both of us. You know, my grandma helped as much as she can as she could uh, by feeding us and like you know always having a hot meal. You know, getting her in her own way, getting her to go and get the help that she needed. And so I stayed with my grandma a lot. Maybe pro it's probably the reason why I watch so many telenovelas because my mom was in therapy. You know, and back then my mom, my grandmother did not like, you know, therapy and like psychiatrists and things like that were only for crazy people. You know, if now the taboo surrounding mental illness is a little bit less, you know, it's because before it was so much more, you know, um, but they did amazing. And, and my mom did amazing, you know, and that the proof is my brother. I mean. 
he's still a little bit stupid sometimes. <laughs> In a sense, of, like he's 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 annoying, you know, um, but he raised a, a a very responsible kid, you know, who does not wear diapers anymore. Um, he peed in his bed until he was like eleven, I think, but not uh, randomly. Also, I don't know what why, and then he blame it on 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 my mom's well, my stepdad. Let's just say that. Um, but yeah, you know, where I was going with that. Well, the thing is that we mothers, you know, uh, as much as like with, with Gante and Sante's mom, we are take to believe that the mom never care about Gante. To this, she did, you know, in her way, you know, in the moments that she had to breathe because she was already putting a lot of, of baggage onto Gante that I don't think she wanted to put more of a burden of like, I know what you're going through. I know I make your life difficult. And so she bottled the, th those things up. But like on this episode, we see that, you know, yeah, there are moments where he felt like that. But they went to that place where, where, where they had that hot... Uh, spicy meal just because Gante liked it it's not that Gante you know was just left in the rain you know uh the mom also called him up it was just a split second and sometimes you know traumas and things like that can last for like I have a memory of my mom saying something very bad to me that it doesn't leave my head and I have it like picture I can close my eyes and remember what I was doing before walking into the kitchen and hearing my mom say those words I can still do it she said that she doesn't recall that that it never happened but it is still in my brain you know it might have not happened in that way it might I don't know she might have said something else but that's what I understood you know, and traumas can be created uh, on such a little time and with such a, with such little words, you know, or lack of, you know what I mean? So I I knew that uh, uh, Gante's mom loved him as well. But sadly, when a kid is born, they don't hand you, okay, and this is how you're going to raise this specific boy, you know? There's no, um, you, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be like, okay, Gante is a little bit more, is also sensitive, you know, and this is the way he, he holds grudges, okay, so you better treat him right. There is no, and like, in our effort to make things right, to, to make them happy, we make mistakes. All moms, all parents, we do, we do make mistakes, you know, um, but when those mistakes are based on love, I think you can, you know, move forward. And it's difficult to do it with your mom being dead, like in Gante's case. Um, and it's difficult to do it with Moon Young as well, because we don't know where the mom is. And the dad is, like, not helpful, you know. So it's difficult. And it is, or like with the other lady, you know, that she doesn't have her daughter to tell her face to face how much she loves her, you know? So, yes, I think moral of the story is, uh, one off is like, you know, yes, you are allowed to have a bad day. Yes, life sometimes sucks, but you also have the opportunity to think before you say something things that could that sometimes you you are not going to be able to take them back you know and I that's one thing that I live by uh, especially with my son it's something that I am like so like you know is in my brain and it doesn't matter I don't care you know and Josh has been difficult this past few weeks as well but the thing is that um even if his difficult times even in, during his tantrums and you know crises and blah 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 i make sure to let him know that no matter what i love him 
because for me, I, I do not wish something like what happened to the lady to happen to me, you know? Because also, people with autism are very much, you know, they, they're very structured and also, you know, they take things at heart. If you say something to them, that's what it is. And that it's, it's, you're not going to change it. You know, if you tell them that way is self and you teach them that there is really, you know, no way for you or it's very difficult to make them change and make them think that that's not south and that's actually north or whatever. I don't, I don't know why I'm using, using directions when I am like stupid at that, you know, so yeah. And so with him having autism, I, I, there is like under no circumstances, you know, and like sometimes I, I feel like he wants to test me, um, especially when he misbehaves and he knows he has done something and after the crisis is over and he, you know, he has cried and all of that and like it's over, we're laying down in his bed or some place or the floor or whatever, uh, he's always like, So even if I did this and you were mad, do you still love me? And I'm still, I still love you. I will always love you. My love is not conditional. My love doesn't come one day and goes the other. Or just because you acted good, you have all my love. Or just because you acted bad, then I'm going to take it back. Because that was something that my mom used to do. That you have to kind of like earn her love and I did not like that I did not like that feeling um and I will never do such a thing to Josh you know anyways what else were we talking about um I did love the Gangte and and Moon Young kind of like you know are dealing with the things and I, I feel like you know yes of course the nightmares and the You know, that she was going to be, be triggered by being in this house. You know, we know that this is not a good place for her to be. But I feel like running away is also not the answer, right? And she has Gante, who can guide her uh, through that. But I also don't want Gante to go from taking care of her bro of his brother all the time To not really, because he's more and more independent every day, to like be fully taking care of Moon Young, and that is his new path. Just taking care of her because she doesn't know better. You know? It's it's sweet, but I want them to go through the things that they have to go through and for both of them to be there for for one another. And I think that we are getting that, you know. Sometimes a little bit more from Gante's uh, uh, side, because Gante is really, that is just, it's who he is, you know. He likes helping people, and, like, that's the reason why he's a nurse and all of that, you know. Um, but I feel like both of them are helping each other out and and just breaking that and just, like, you know, letting themselves be and facing their demons uh, at the same time. Um, even with Moon Young's, like, you know, teasing and all of that, you know, I feel like, like, Gangte is kind of breaking that uh, shell and coming out and it's, you know, it's gonna be beautiful once he's, he has gotten rid of that Uh, all of his trauma and things like that. So the fact that he was crying this episode, laughing this episode, I feel like that is progress for both of them. It's progress, you know, uh, for both of them independently and for both of them as maybe something else, you know? So, yeah. And the psychiatrist is very, you know, he's, he thinks he's very slick. He's very smooth, right? He sees things and then he pushes on the people, you know, to kind of like get the answers that he wants or get, you know, the help that they are not willingly asking, but that he knows that behind that there is that help that they need. 
Uh, I loved <laughs> that as soon as he saw Moon Young, <laughs> he started to run away. <laughs> and he said, oh, now I can't run away. I can't run because of my knees and shit like that. <laughs> and then he saw her and was running and jumping from stairs. He did not want to face the wrath <laughs> of Miss Go, you know, so... Yeah, um, but now we we are like, oh, maybe Moon Young's mom is actually alive because she was declared dead five years after her disappearance. So yes, and we did see uh, what's her name? Oh, we did see Moon Young on the basement, but she could also be remembering things wrong, you know. So I don't know. Nothing is past me, you know. Uh, and one thing that this show has taught me is that from one perspective, it might look like that. But if you bring in all of it, you might get a different picture, you know. So there is that. Uh, anyways, I love this one. Thank you, Victoria, for sponsoring this series one of the most beautiful series I have watched in a while. Uh, it's so well done. It's so like the dialogue um, and how realistic it is, especially for me, someone who has a son with autism, you know, and, and, and to see kind of the same path that Gante has with his brother that I had with my son is kind of like the same and I relate to him so much. And I just love it. You know, and I just want to thank you as well because you have made my mom a fan also of this this series, and she might finish it before I I do, but you know, she's only watching that. I'm watching like three hundred other shows, so <laughs> I think it's okay. Anyways, I think she stayed up until two a.m. yesterday, watching. Uh, I think she's in episode eleven or something like that. Um, I'm not joking, by the way. My mom has an account here. Uh, on my uh, on my account, this is my mom, and she is watching this. So she is on episode, as you can see, she's on episode ten. Ele oh, she's a, she's in episode thirteen. My God, she's in episode thirteen. So she's about to finish. And I'm not lying. She is. She is watching it and, and loving it. So, yeah. Uh, but that's it. Um, <laughs> thank you, Victoria. And thank you to everyone who's watching my reactions for this amazing and beautiful show. Hope you guys enjoy. Next time, I'm going to hydrate a little bit more because uh, I'm probably going to cry again. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. Thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. Thumbs up, subscribe, comment, hit notification bell, on car reaction, on Patreon, hearts if you're on Patreon. And for now, that's it. I'll see you guys next time for more reaction videos for it's okay to not be okay. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.